me, Tony here. Um, unfortunately, tonight, um, our guest, Jen, uh, unfortunately, isn't feeling well, so it'll just be me just doing a quick live. And, um, well, since it was last minute, I didn't have too much time to prepare, so I figured, well, let me just um, share something I've been meaning to take a video of anyway, which was about my super dirty side. Uh, well, I'm wearing a Wonder Woman shirt with a cape. Woo! <laughs> Uh, this was just a fun Halloween costume I saw it and I was like, oh, I have to get this. So, but I just figured I'll let you guys know more about me because this group's, well, one of our big themes is vulnerability, right? And being comfortable, being our true, weird, wacky selves. Oh, when I got a haircut, yes. <laughs> Thank you uh, for the homemade haircut, mom. So uh, I'm just looking back. I'm about to move out from my... Um, from New York where I'd been hovering around. I um, was away from my parents' home for three, four months in upstate uh, New York for a while, but I still felt like with the pandemic, I'm not too comfortable leaving the state. But I'm feeling better now that we have a vaccine and just with the variants and everything, I just thought I don't want to keep holding myself back and um, suppressing my own travel dreams. So I'm going to get out there. I'm going to do some adventures safely, um, but just within the confines, right? And um, I've always wanted to check out Western U.S., all the beautiful national parks there. I would say if, if um, I could pick anywhere, I'd love to be in southern, sunny Southern California. It's great food, great culture, very liberal, great weather. Um, and knowing me, because I'm very affected, my mood's very affected by the sun. So just year round warmth. And I love doing outdoor activities like sports and hiking. And so that would just be my dream place to live. But also uh, as someone who's into like financial independence, retirely, all that stuff, I'm just like, it is so expensive there. Like how can I, well, not how can I save? I can save more if I go to a lower cost of living place. So anyway, I'm moving to Vegas and um, this, weekend. So in two days, I'll be somewhere new. But I figured today I'll just share some random um, projects that I had, especially when I was younger, like especially before I leave home. So this was my Pokemon, whoops, my Pokemon notebook. And I remember making this when I was um, 11. And I just, I was so obsessed. I knew the whole Poke rap. Well, I was only uh gener onto generation two but i played all the games up to pokemon crystal i had to get everything being the collectionist that i was and so i i just loved drawing everything related to my um obsessions i loved the characters i made what is, it? What is even this oh so yeah this is just a pokemon book and um, i have this you can decode what the pokemon are saying so this was one of those red cellophanes that you got at cer in cereal boxes. I got this from a cookie crisp. And then you just, I had various uh, Pokemon with their messages. And so you can decode it by using the red cellophane over it. So you can actually see what Pikachu is saying. And I just really like interactive, um, creative projects like this. It's a way for me to express my love for the topic and for, um, uh, what do you want to call it? Yeah, just like uh, to yeah to express my creativity, I will say. Um, and then I had oh it's falling apart a bit. I apologize, but I just thought I would share. And then my a big thing I'm proud of actually is making this special um, Pikachu book. Now this came about because in my high after school program in fifth grade, we were bored one day and I just had some post-its and I was like, Hey, let's, let me put together a, you choose your own adventure tunnel game. And I just drew some three tunnels and then it's like, what happens depending on which one you chose. And so, uh, this one came as like a extended version of that. So it's about the Pikachu who fell into a cave, he got stuck and then has to fight its way out. So I know this isn't the best way to experience this. If we meet in person, I'd love for you to try this out but you get to choose tunnels and there's flaps that I did it all by hand and it's just like go to page 
this to fight a Pokemon. And so Pikachu falls into the cave and then he's trying to get his way out. And then you have weapons. So uh, you start off with a Squirtle gun as your weapon. And then I even have the accompanying weapon and item cards that I made. And then they're all color coded too. So you just accumulate cards as you go through. So basically I created a video game that doesn't actually require much tech. So it's just you move through um, the world and then there's like treasure chests and then you can open them on the flaps. And uh, you know, you have battles with Pokemon and then you choose, I guess it does come down to luck. Some of them uses some Pokemon trivia later, but uh, for these, it's just luck picking what would be the one that would get you to win. And then there's like Team Rocket, and uh, you, you fight their Pokemon. It's just a lot of fun. Um, and you just try to aim at different parts of their body. And then it says either hit or miss. So, And then I, I love this page, especially because I created um, these little uh, bath time <laughs> props for Pikachu. So they're actually pieces of paper. And you can actually take them out and then have fun scrubbing Pikachu. <laughs> So um, I know this is probably more entertaining for kids, but hey, I was entertained. I was 11 and I had always dreamed that it'd be so cool if uh, something like this could be mass produced and then just to entertain kids all over. I guess it was a different time though before we had tablets and all other digital forms of entertainment. Um, and then this one actually uses some Pokemon trivia. So this one you have to fight through all the forms of Eevee and then you just keep going and answering more questions and this knowledge of pokemon is helps and then you have all of these uh all the different forms of eevee and basically until you get to the end and you battle through so yeah this was oh and then this page it had some pokemon trivia like who is this and then oops i guess you can see but anyway, it's just I just loved expressing my creativity. Um, I also wrote fan fiction. I drew fan art. I even created websites with GeoCities back in the day. Unfortunately, those all got taken down, and I I lost all my work. I lived back in the days where you had the computer and floppy disks, and the computers were not well built against viruses, and so they crashed. And so I lost a lot of my work from my childhood. And then there was a part of me that became really sad and I felt like my my soul died especially when I started medical school or and I was like well it's time to grow up I it's fine that I've lost these childhood mementos um because it's time to be an adult now uh, but I'm glad that that I, I now that I've been able to get back in touch with my inner child and my creative side and I feel so much lighter and happier and more joyful because I'm able to go back to the things that brought me such joy before. Um, a couple other projects. This was for French class. This is the whole uh, family album. It's just about my extended family and I used pictures and I drew. Uh, this was, I was 12 for this. So this for French class. We have, uh, oh, um, the members of the family and then information about them, their birthdays, what they like and dislike. So, oh yeah, there's just <laughs> all people, grandparents, relatives. And at the end is this Chinese zodiac. Oh, even my pet cat. <laughs> and I fell in love with it. And then I also made a, a Chinese zodiac of um, the, the 12 animals. So it's just... Don't know if you could relate. Did you feel so much more free as a kid? <laughs> so um, just thought I'd share that. And even every chance I got, even for my English class portfolios, when they had us make, uh, say, yeah, our, our writing portfolio, I always found a way to gamify or add cute cartoons and uh, just visuals to it. So this one was my eighth grade portfolio, and it was called Mystical Journey. You try to go on a mystical journey and you have to read through my um my pieces like my creative writing pieces and otherwise oops over here 
in order to answer the questions at the end in order to get your prize or your treasure. So this is loosely based off of Xi Ji, which was Journey to the West. And um, they had you know, the four characters, the Sun Kong, the Monkey King, and uh, his companions as they traveled together to collect these, uh, gosh, ancient texts, the Jing texts. And so as you go through, there's just different uh, areas. This first one is about a favorite video game when I was younger for Nintendo 64. It was called Banjo Kazooie. So I wrote about uh, the the history of some of the characters, and I subscribed to Nintendo Power. Who here knows what that is, right? <laughs> and uh, I took the collages and I made it. Um, I just had so much fun with everything. Uh, Banjo Kazooie. Here's a picture of Banjo and Kazooie, the bird and a bear pair. And then as you go through, there's my writing pieces. Um, oh, here's another collage. But it's, I just loved it. And then at the end, because the third area is China, it's written about, about my past a bit. But I loved at the end, I tied it all together. And most portfolios, they don't have a conclusion at the end or something you should aim for. But for mine, you actually get to the end of your journey, da da da, and you're here to collect the ancient texts and actually these ancient texts in my portfolio teach you some basic Chinese so you go through and you have to pick the right answers in order to they're the flaps that you lift up as well in order to get your Chinese lesson at the end and it was I just made a quick for beginners Chinese lesson and how to uh, pronounce them um, and this was just projects like these I've done so many and I'm so grateful I'm really so grateful that I can still find many of these. I can't find every project I made as a child, unfortunately, but the ones that I do still have, I truly cherish. Um, I do still have some games of when I was younger too, the N64, and of course the Game Boy with all of the Pokemon games. Um, and later on as an adult, I did go ahead and get a 3DS and a regular DS just to de-stress, but my 3DS is here and I love Fire Emblem. I've done some poems and raps about Fire Emblem. I think it would be in another post, but I can link to that. It's just my nerdy side and I feel like a lot of people don't know that about me. Or maybe they do. <laughs> um, but I figured it's worth making a video even if this all it does is serve as a reminder to myself that I watch later on. So... Yeah, thanks for going through if you're still here with me. I just wanted to ask you what you loved as a kid, what your inner child is like, and what your inner child yearns for. And so just sit down and listen to that. Um, find a comfortable spot or get a pen and paper or type on your computer, just whatever comes to mind as you try to think back on when you were young and life seemed a little easier or more carefree or, you know, I, I recently, as we found out from our live with Jackie, thank you so much again, Jackie, that we uh, absorb like a sponge until we're age seven. Our conscious mind doesn't develop yet until then. So we really, but I think because our conscious mind doesn't quite develop, we also have less fear and judgment towards ourselves and what we want to do. When when you were a young kid, you were just like, I want to do this. And you just went and did it. You didn't think overthink it so much. And we didn't think about the potential consequences or bad outcomes. We were, most of us, I think, at least we were a little less anxious than we are now. Like that fear of not being liked by others or fear of failing. Um, even fear of what it means if we are successful and the change and uh, our, how our life would be uprooted and everything like that so I just kind of what all of us I think we all have a beautiful creative lovely inner child inside each and every one of us and if I can offer any tips on getting back in touch with that it's as I said before getting getting paper or getting a a serene comfortable Spot and just sitting down and tuning in to yourself and your body and your feelings and your sensations 
Um, two, I would say try to slow down and make some time for that. Just carve out a certain amount of time, even five minutes a day to do that. Or better yet, get together with other people. And for me, I've always wanted to be an anime and manga artist, and I still do. I, I think I have so many dreams. I know I'm multi-passionate, but I still have that within me, just my childhood dream. I would love to make a manga like all of those Japanese comic artists out there, a beautiful, creative, original story, and then it gets made into an anime uh, show, an animated show with voice actors and everything. I'd love to be one of the voice actors myself, too, because I feel like I could bring so much life to a character. And I've seen some voiceovers or dubs where it's they just sound lifeless. I, I don't know if you've seen that. They are great in Japanese, and then when they get translated to English, they just talk, like, monotonously the whole time. So I just always thought voice acting would be great. And so that's why I started sketching my uh, badminton manga. Um, we call it The Princess of Badminton. It's not inked at all. I'm more of an idea person than going through everything person, but... If you can, I don't know if you can see, I'll, I'll link to some of the sketches that I've put onto my website, but this is something that I hope to keep working on and I hope to one day publish. Self-publish is okay, but I would love, it'd be my dream come true if it got picked up, published, eventually made into uh, an anime. Um, that and I know I have hopefully 70 more years of my life to, to work on this and, and do this and I'm just like, hey. Even if I have to do all the work myself, this is going to happen. So um, manga artists, so that was, and, and I know that the more that I don't do my drawing and the more out of touch with myself I feel. Um, so I want to start making, carving out time, carving out regular time to dedicated to my creativity and anyone else who wants to get back in touch with their creative side too is welcome to join. I think I'll do once a month at least manga Mondays or just uh, some inner child creative day and we'll just come and I'll it's a ex good excuse for me to work on my art and uh, or even play a game if I just want to indulge my inner child and anyone is welcome as well I we could work on something together, we could share characters or sketches, we could play one of those games where it's like you fold a piece of paper into thirds and then someone draws the head and someone draws the body and someone draws the legs or the feet. I used to do that all the time. I could entertain myself for hours, well, even when I was alone, when my parents were working all the time. And then when I had uh, my sister, when uh, when she came into the world when I was 12, there was a big age gap. So, but we still enjoyed many of these, these activities that normally they say, or, not, or that they say it's for kids, but adults can enjoy too. It's, we all, I really feel that we all have that inside of us, that sense of play and wonder and curiosity for the world. And the ability to really live in the moment and enjoy life and just getting back with that child inside of us. Because being an adult does not mean that we're boring. <laughs> I truly believe that. So anyway, thanks so much. This was just a quick live. I wanted to share uh, all my nerdiness. And I have all my games downstairs and my Yu-Gi-Oh cards and... Gosh, they're, they're, and all my posters. I used to have all these anime posters all over my room. This is not the room I grew up in, though. Um, so yeah, I'd love to see any of your childhood obsessions or hobbies or dreams. And let's get together and get back in touch with them. Because I would just love to ho hold an event dedicated for that and to hold that space for you all. So uh, stay tuned. I guess I'll put together the event sometime. And... Uh, We'll just see how it goes and what we end up creating. Again. Woo! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have a great night, everyone.